Hello and welcome back to Coin Lady channel where we bring you the latest and most interesting XRP related stories. According to rumors, Ripple has settled the legal fees associated with its SEC lawsuit. Because this data has been divulged by a reliable source, it is safe to assume that this is indeed the first to report on this development. Take note of this new information because it may herald the end of the Ripple vs SEC case, either through a settlement between the parties or a victory for the SEC. For the XRP side of the Ripple vs. SEC case, this is of the utmost importance and could prove to be a game changer. If the lawsuit determines that XRP is a cryptocurrency rather than a security, the price will soar. And this comes at a time when a prominent member of the XRP community, attorney Jeremy Hodgins, is claiming that the judge has already made up his mind about whether or not XRP is a security. Perhaps now is the time to say openly that the missing piece is in fact a cryptocurrency and not a security. In addition, this information is timely from the perspective of the XRP price. The PR that's yet another critical piece of data we've been given access to. Initial public disclosure was made by Ripple's CEO. According to him, the SEC complaint should have a response by the beginning of 2023. He did, however, make it abundantly clear that his best estimates place the actual disclosure sometime in the first three months of 2023. And now, just as the first quarter of 2023 comes to a close and we prepare to enter the first half of that year, I have a surprise for all of you parallel universes out there. When taken together with the recent tweet by XRP Captain suggesting that the Ripple versus the litigation could conclude by the 31 cent of March 2023 diamond hands, this strongly suggests that a settlement is imminent in the Ripple SEC lawsuit based on the words of the Ripple CEO. There have been rumors that the judge has already decided whether or not XRP is a security, and this coincides with reports that Ripple has paid the court fees and settled the SEC lawsuit. Fiery fingers. It also coincides with the rumor that Ripple has paid the court fees associated with their SEC lawsuit. In addition, we are writing to request that the Federal Reserve of the United States of America hold an emergency meeting on March 13 th. This all points to the conclusion that something is happening and that the Ripple lawsuit is, for the most part, over. Ripple CEO Brad Gollinghouse added that the company is ahead of the competition because of its enterprise blockchain. Period. Complete stop. As seen in the X, Y, and Z price charts of late. Ripple is in a similar position to that of Amazon Syria in 1997 in terms of the products it needs to launch in order to get the liquidity market up and running. Cross-border payments are just the beginning product to get the liquidity market started in the recent X3 price increase, and Ripple is in a position where I compare it to Amazon Syria in 1997 books. By comparing the 2014-2015 chart with the current one, we can see that XRP value increased by a whopping 1,000% between 2017 and 2018, from $1,850,000 to $6 million. According to forecasts, XRP will soon cause a slew of wild, delectable pump action price fluctuations. Looking back at 2021 and 2020, we see gains of 160%, and we're on the cusp of earning another couple thousand percentage increases at the bare minimum of crypto wholesaling. At the apex of each triangle, XRP has a substantial final close. Will things be different this time around? You can share your predictions for the price of XRP during its next anticipated market spike in the space provided below. A second lawyer, John Deaton, who represents 75,000 XRP holders, has also confirmed that they agree with Ripple. CEO Brad Gollinghouse has hinted that cryptocurrencies in general, and XRP in particular, may be the solution to the current crisis in the US banking system. Is it my imagination, or did the CEO of Ripple just say that the US banking system urgently needs new, disruptive technology? This was a tweet from Brad Gollinghouse discussing the possibility of Silicon Valley Bank going bankrupt. He says it's ironic that while some businesses are rushing to make payroll highlights, criminals are breaking into our financial system and stealing from our wires, neither of which are always up and running. Because of the resistance to the flow of money within a deep chasm sown by rumors, the structure collapsed. Most recent estimates place the number of people who own XRP at just 4,761, making up only 0.27% of the global population. Just try to fathom the fact that even if every man had invested in XRP, he would only have 12.8 times as much as he does now. 
To illustrate, suppose there were 7.8 billion people in the world today. Given that the world has an estimated 7.8 billion inhabitants, this means that roughly 2 out of every 10 million people will be able to own well over 1 XRP. For some reason, this completely baffles me. There's also the fact that each PayPal user can only have 322.22 XRP in their wallet at any given time. This means that eventually XRP will be locked up and unavailable to the general public. To amass the most XRP, people will be more willing to spend more money to buy from one another. Because there isn't enough XRP for everyone to actually own, this fact alone will drive the price of XRP higher. There will be enough takers at the higher price. Wow, this is fantastic news. Alex Cobb also brought this up, arguing that if 100 billion XRP were distributed equally among the world's population, each person would only receive 12.5x XRP. So, just let that sink in for a second. It has been reported that Johnny King believes the choice selection in the Ripple case is becoming more and more important by the day. It will serve as a distraction and a spur to action. If you believe this sequence theory to be true, then all XRP transactions, including XRP itself, would take place in the secondary market for securities. Obviously, this is a retweet of Ellen Trent's recent tweet, which quoted Rainey Frank, a board member at Signature Bank, as saying that the bank's closure was politically motivated. Since there was no fundamental bankruptcy, I believe that regulators wanted to send a very strong anti-crypto message by allowing all of this to take place. We were used as examples to spread this message. Let me know what you think by responding below. Do you agree that crypto will be around for a while? Do you think the government is working hard to eliminate cryptocurrency and will stop at nothing to achieve this goal? Do you think, for instance, that the government will try to eradicate cryptocurrency by doing everything possible as a security measure or by closing banks that help and assist in invading the cryptocurrency industry? You can rest assured that I will carefully consider each and every one of your suggestions. I should also remember that Ripple has transferred 960 million XRP while a third crypto-friendly bank has failed. After Signature Bank went down for the second time, the Ripple fintech company moved over 900 million XRP in three large batches. The insanity of it all is that these three financial institutions are not a handful of obscure local institutions. The reason for this is that after Signature Bank went under once again, the fintech company Ripple dumped over 900 million XRP in three massive dumps. Now these three major brands of crypto-friendly have always been at the forefront of the crypto industry's innovation and have essentially allowed obscure nations to use their services, which are currently being dismantled and eradicated. Many are emphasizing that it is something the government does on purpose. Bitcoin is trading 12.43% higher than it was at the beginning of the day, while Ethereum and XRP are both trading up 6.9%. That's fantastic news. A report from Selena's 5.83 on the new scale. Therefore, the general state of the cryptocurrency market is relatively healthy. Overall, despite Conflict's current volume of around 400 million, its position in the top 10 has improved by 33.18%, largely as a result of the 9.72% increase in all coins. Because of this, the cryptocurrency market as a whole is doing quite well at the moment. Unfortunately, this is the final shot in the video. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.